Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm very excited about today's video. I don't know why I feel so motivated today, but I do. And the reason I feel motivated is, well, let me ask you this. Do you watch YouTube as much as I do? And I know you're thinking, I don't know how much you watch it. I watch it a lot. And sometimes I feel guilty about how much time I waste. Like for instance, I watch a lot of sewing videos. I love to sew. And I came across this video of the cutest person ever. Her name's Just Dang. And she made this video that I watched about how to make um, a little cottage cord dress. It was the cutest thing. And I loved it. And I'm thinking to myself this morning, why don't I actually try making that? She went through all the effort to show us how exactly to do it. Why don't I try it? So um, I put my face on and now I'm out and about. I need to go find fabric. The only stores here for fabric are Joann's or Hobby Lobby. Uh, I was hoping to maybe explore and find a new fabric store, but that's not gonna happen today. Um, so we're probably gonna stick with Joann's. Joann. Joann. Joann's. Um, cause we don't go to Hobby Lobby on this channel. Sorry. That's my plan for today. So if you ever find yourself wondering like, I wonder what it takes to actually make one of those and actually try it, you can just watch me do it and then you can still sit and watch the YouTube videos and you don't have to actually try it yet. I'll try it for you. I'll be the guinea pig. And then, if it goes well, you can try it too. Or you can just try it now, whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm not your boss. First things first, the most important is I have to get a little morning treat. Coffee treat. See you in a sec. It's like a reward. It's like a reward. For nothing yet. <laughs> now we need to go to Joanne. I still don't know if it's Joanne or Joanne's. We need to go there. Um, I'm thinking this is gonna be a, at least a two yarder for sure. Okay, let's get going. It's Joanne. This could be really cute actually. So usually what I do is I'll just scan the aisles first and I just, I look for prints and colors that I like. And then usually what I'll do is I'll feel it. That's usually my first thing I do. It's like this. I start feeling it and I look at the drape. This is really, really lightweight. I mean, it makes sense. It's in the silky print section. So I want something with a little more structure, like just a little more weight than this because like the puffy sleeves on that dress, they won't stay puffed if you have something this delicate. So, um, and then I also feel for if it stretches or not because we don't want a stretchy fabric. We want a woven fabric. So this back section, usually in every joins, it's usually just basic cottons for like quilting and stuff. It's not the best options for dresses, but it can work. I think the bees could be really cute actually. I really like this one. Um, if you're curious, this number here is referring to the width of the fabric. So this one's 44 inches wide. So if you're curious how to order or how to buy fabric when you're at Joann's, literally you just grab the bolt you want like this, you go take it to that big cutting desk, and you tell them how many yards you want. I think you can do it in eighth yard increments. And yeah, if you just take the width into account, and it's always on the top here, then you'll know exactly what size piece of fabric you're getting. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this. It can be really cute. Perfect, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you, and have a great day. You too. Hi, we're back to my house. Welcome to my sewing studio. I'm in my dining room. There's a fridge in here. Why is the fridge in here? Good question, ask my husband, I have no idea. But we're gonna roll with it. So, I figure while the fabric I bought is washing, which I don't usually do, but I want to try it this time. I want to see if it makes any difference in the final product to wash it before. Oh, sorry. To wash it before you sew your project versus after it's done. So while I wait for that to wash and dry, I figure I can make the pattern. I am not looking forward to measuring myself. Uh, <laughs> It's been a rough year as far as my health goes. At this point last year, I was not able to keep any weight on and I was dipping under 100 pounds. 
Um, I'm back to normal now, but as far as body image, it's been a wild ride and I'm really not looking forward to measuring myself. <laughs> I'm at a healthy weight now and I want to stay there and I don't want to tell my brain that I'm too big. Like, I need the weight. But Jess in her video does everything in centimeters, so I figure, okay, I'll do everything in centimeters too because I never measure myself in centimeters, so that way I won't be like messing with myself, you know? It'll, it'll make no difference to me. So, um, okay, I need to watch the video and I need to get started. Pardon for the top part of the dress. I cut a rectangle with 26 cm length, which is the length from the top of the breast to the belly button, and 42 cm width, which is a half of my bust side. She says we need the height of this rectangle is your upper high bust to your belly button. So let me get that here. So let's go from here. We'll go 32 centimeters. And then she said the width of that rectangle is half of the bust. So let me get my bust. We're looking at 90. So this rectangle will be 32 by 45. So let's draw that out. I draw a straight line in the middle of the rectangle to divide into two smaller ones. After that, I draw a horizontal line at 11 cm under the top line of the rectangle. It's the length of my breast. Next, she said draw a line down the middle. There. Hi, honey. And then she also said I need the length from, like the length of my bust. So I don't know if she means like this length over your bust itself or just the flat distance because those can be two separate things. She measured it right in the middle. So that's what I'm gonna try to do as well. I'm gonna go with 18. That measurement, 17, is what we do here. What? That looks way different than hers. All right, we'll just go with it. What's next? From the straight line, I draw another straight line at two sides, 15 centimeters away from each other. So the width between two new straight lines will be 30 centimeters, which is the width between two inside shoulders. The width between two inside shoulders. That would be from um, shoulder seam to shoulder seam. 34. So 34 divided by two is 17. All right, so this is where we're at now. I just folded it in half to get the two middle line. And this is from shoulder to shoulder. I think we're good now. On picking the first straight line and the horizontal line, I move up and mark at three centimeters on the straight line. Then connecting this mark to the mask at the middle of two straight lines at each side. Based on this line, she said go up three centimeters and then measure the middle point. So we have the middle point of 17 is 8.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8.5, right there. Okay? And then I go over 8.5. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight point five. Okay. Then she said draw a line. Okay, got that. What's next? Based on this line, I draw a curved line there to create a curved line from the middle between two breasts to two sides of the breast. I also draw two curved lines by on the straight line. Okay, so now she's drawing curves, so I'm just gonna try to make it look like that. <laughs> Got that, what's next? 
curved line I just drew before that. At the top of the bus area, I marked at 1cm outside. Then connecting these marks to the mask at 3cm under the top of the land lines of the rectangle. This will be the connecting point. Okay, so she's doing the seam allowance. One centimeter right here. And then she went down three. And then she drew a line. I wonder why we're not just making one half, you know? I think I will do one half, honestly. Okay, next. Connecting part with the sleeve later. From the end of the first straight line, I marked at two sides, 16 centimeters. Now I need my waist size. I'm glad I'm not going to see this in inches. I don't want to know. Alright, one quarter of my waist is 18.5. Here. Here. And then what she do? Which is a quarter of my waist size. Then connect these marks to the mask on the land lines at the sleeve area. I connect it to the wrong mask in this step, so I have to chain it later. Okay, so then she connected. So I took some time to chew everything up, clean everything up. Okay, let me explain what I did. So I had this piece that I was drafting and um, I decided to just cut it in half. Jess in her video has it as one whole piece, like this plus the symmetrical view of that. Um, but I decided to cut it in half and cut it on the fold. So I still have the same piece at the end of the day. Before I cut the piece out for the bust, I had it there and then I used that as the template for the back. And then I just added one centimeter for seam allowance. So this was like this, like that. To make the bus area pardon, I cut a rectangle with 14 cm length, which is the width of my bread. I should write that down. Hold on. Hold on! Bust length 17 cm, okay. Which is 1.3 times a quarter of my bus size. Okay, and then bust was 90. One quarter of that is 22.5. So she made a rectangle that was 22.5 by 17. Wait. Wait, what? And 30 centimeter width, which is 1.3 times a quarter of my bus size. Oh, 1.3 times the quarter of the bus size. 22.5 times 1.3, that's 29.25. Scratch that, should be 29. 0.25. Okay. Then she said, on one length line, I marked out at eight centimeters, which is the length of the breast. She said the length of her breast was. Wait. She said the next part is three minus is whatever the width of the bust is minus three. So for her that would be eleven, but she marked eight. So I don't know what to mark. Should I do six or should I do three? Okay, and then she wants that connected. Like that, okay. To create a curved line from the middle of the bread to two sides, I also draw a curved line on the land line to connect to this curved line. It's similar to the way I... Okay, and she, I think she wants us to repeat those curves. So I'm going to take my other pattern piece, I'm going to lay it underneath, and I'm going to trace that mark. Okay, you guys, I got really, really confused for the skirt part. First things first, I couldn't tell the way Jess was doing the skirt because when you're drafting a skirt, you have to take into account the width of the fabric you bought because that can determine, in essence, how long you can make your skirt. So I didn't know what width fabric she had, so I couldn't just copy exactly her method in case she had a different width. So 
I did a lot of research about how to draft circle skirts, and I think what she drafted was a half circle skirt. Now for a half circle skirt, basically what you're doing is, here, I'll show you my little sketch I made. You're basically cutting this out of the fabric. So a half circle skirt literally means like you're making a big circle. Well, let me back up. A full circle skirt would be you cut a whole circle out of your fabric, you cut a little hole in the center, and then that would be your waist. A half circle skirt is instead of cutting a full circle out of the fabric, you're just cutting a half circle. So what's happening is this hole in here has to be long enough to wrap around our entire waist. So basically what I drafted, this piece here is this hole. So instead of drafting the paper pieces with these huge pieces here to save fabric, or paper, to save paper, I just drafted that part. Hi, it's a new day. Um, I took the liberty of finishing up the circle skirt stuff. I didn't want to bore y'all with that. It took a long time to figure that out. And then after that, I went ahead and cut all my pieces out of the fabric. So we have the bust piece, the front bodice, the back, and the sleeves. And then I have skirt pieces over here. They're just too big to hold up. I also noticed in the video, Jess didn't have a lining for the bust pieces. So I had some leftover cotton batiste, just real thin white cotton fabric. So I'm gonna try to use that as lining for the bust, but everything else should have a lining. So I think the first step, if I recall, is something to do with the bust pieces. So let's get my phone and start watching how to assemble it. Inside of the bust area piece, I fold the end of it inside and sew to finish it. After that, I draw a horizontal line at 4 cm under the top one. Then folding the end fabric into this line to create a fabric hole there. Alright, so actually the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything is I'm just going to baste the lining piece to the fashion fabric so it, just, so it stays in place. Okay, so I made the casing for the drawstring. I think the drawstring is next, yeah. She said she had a piece that was four centimeters around 40 centimeters long. And then she made the drawstring from that. Okay, time to make drawstrings. That literally took forever. Um, usually I do the method that Jess does where you just kind of make like bias tape and just sew the strap that way. But sometimes I don't like how flat the strap ends up looking. I like it to look more round. So I usually avoid like the plague to make a strap in the way that you have to turn it inside out because it's just such a pain in the butt. But I tried a new method 
that I saw where you sew a piece of yarn on the inside of your strap all the way down. Like you don't attach it, it's just like floating inside. And then there's string hanging out the end when you're done and then you can like pull on the string to turn it inside out and it worked amazing. So if y'all are scared of spaghetti straps too, I would highly recommend doing that. It worked very well. And I made them a little longer than 40 centimeters. I just wanted extra room to play with. So, finally done with that, what is next? Fravic hole. And so one end of the tie to one end of the fravic hole. Okay, then she pulls there. them through from the outside to the inside, and then we're gonna attach it on the outside. Got it. Okay, I have the two bust pieces done. Here is the left side, and it has the drawstring like that. And then here's the right side. Okay, let's see what's next. Thing. I made a loose seam at the end oh, of now the bust area the piece to create a gathering fabric there later. Make sure the final width of this part okay. will be the She's same with the, the bottom of the curve and then the, on the front width of piece. that gathered so you can edge should match the later. front bodice piece. I'm trying to see how far I need to gather. So I got my front bodice piece and I'm just like putting it up next to that. So this curve needs to match probably to right about here. And then it needs to be gathered. about right here I think we will try that Okay, yeah, and then we go ahead and attach it. So, so I need to pin this here. I think that looks okay. So this is what we're looking at. I got both bust pieces sewed in. That's a very hard seam to do. FYI, if you're gonna do this. It looks like what she's doing next is she's attaching the two back pieces. But she did something about how she redid the seams. It I said when making the pattern, I draw a wrong line at the side of the front. She said she drew a wrong pattern. line. Therefore, I have to make a new seam when connecting And it looks like she just trued up the side seam a little bit. Okay, I can do that. Okay, yeah, I went and held it up to myself and it was fitting a little weird at the side, so I just tried to grade that a little bit more instead of it having such a sharp angle. I kept it on the bigger side still just in case because I'm worried overall it's gonna be small. But we'll see. Let us see what is next. Oh, she's doing the same for the lining pieces. So front, back, and back, I think. Yeah, okay. So I need to do the lining, which will be the front part and the two back parts. That is easy enough.
Okay, we're doing another casing that looks like on the top long curve, four centimeters. Then I fold the end of the fabric to this line to create the fabric hole there later. Okay, so same thing as last time. And then so the underarm seam. From the end of the sleeve, I draw a line at four centimeters inside. And then another it. casing on the other, the opposing edge of the long and curve. The end fabric into this line to create a fabric hole there. Okay, got it. So here's the sleeve piece. Here's the long curve on the top. So we're gonna do a four centimeter line like that and then make the casing there, right sides together. So this seam here and then another casing here. centimeter length for the shoulder part of the sleeve. Make sure the final length of this part will be 15 centimeters, which is the length from the shoulder to the armpit. Don't forget to sew two ends of the elastic pen to two ends of the fabric hole to keep it not moving. For the end of the sleeve, I cut around 24 centimeter length of the elastic pen, which is the width of my arm. Close the fabric hole there after connecting two ends of the elastic pen together. So. I need to cut a piece of elastic that goes over my shoulder, right here, and then a piece of elastic for right here. All right, so I took my flannel off and then I wrapped the elastic around my bicep and I actually used a safety pin. I used a safety pin and I clipped it together, slid this on, and I checked if it would stay in place but not feel too tight. So I found where that was and that's whatever this length is and this is and it's gonna have a three centimeter overlap so now I'm gonna take this elastic put the safety pin on the end okay safety pins on the end I'm gonna get a sleeve and I'm gonna find my hole that I left. And I'm gonna start threading this through here. Okay, I've almost reached the beginning. Okay. There we go. So here's the start, here's the end. I'm gonna take the pin off and I'm just gonna overlap these together three centimeters. Oh no! Oh wait, there it is. Okay. I'm gonna overlap these about three centimeters and sew it together. And I'm gonna make sure that it's not twisted on the inside. Okay, both sleeves are done. I have some of the extra elastic on the underarms hanging out in case I wanna loosen it or tighten it, whatever. So just a little bit extra for now. I'll cut it off later when we're done. What is next? Connecting the sleeves to the top part of the dress. So we're connecting the sleeves. Remember to keep one centimeter extra at this part to connect to the other piece of the main pattern later. So you can hide on the seam inside. And she said make sure to leave the seam allowance for the not line. Only outside, but also inside. Okay. And then we put the lining in. Okay. 
Okay, so here's that underarm seam. This is the sleeve right here. And then we have the two little extra pieces right here to attach with the lining. So I think we're good to go. Okay, so here's where we're at. We have the whole top done. I think um, this waistline is too low because my true waist is about right here. It's causing some puckering. This line down here at the bottom is designed to wrap around the narrowest part of my waist, but right now it's sitting on a part that's wider than that, so it's having trouble getting around. I wanted to show y'all what I was talking about by the meaning of a half circle skirt. So what you're looking at right now is what I was showing you on paper uh, a day or two ago. So here's what's happening with a half circle skirt. You can see it looks like half of a circle, right? The length of this curve right here should equate to your waist circumference. I'm kind of at a spot now where I actually don't need to keep referring to the video because I can see how the rest of it is going to be constructed. So I'm not gonna keep inserting clips of me watching from now on. Thank you so much, Jess, for the video. It's been very resourceful and I'm having a great time so far. I'm gonna finish making the dress and, well, the skirt, I mean. I'm gonna finish making the skirt and then we'll get to the part that I was talking about with the waist. We need to deal with that. So I'm just gonna put some footage, speed footage of me doing the skirt real quick. So that'll involve making the slit in the front, doing the two side seams, and that's it actually. Okay, so see you in a sec. On yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah And once you finally get a taste of the race, you'll never look back once you felt that Alrighty, I've sewed in the lining. I actually did it by hand. I want to show off my hand stitches. Oh, those are just beautiful. I love a good hand stitch sometimes. To me it just screams, this was made with love. Don't you think? I hope this fits now. I uh, trimmed the waist like we talked about on the bodice. I just trimmed a couple centimeters off and I didn't try it on again, so I hope it fits. I've learned my lesson. Always try it on, don't be lazy. All that hand stitching I did, I'm gonna have to take it out because the bodice is still too short. In the back, there's a lot of this action going on. The bodice is still, it's still too long. Other than that, I really love it. I even like when the sleeves drop like that, I think it's cute. <laughs> 